ਜੇਤਾ ਸਮੁੰਦ ਸਾਗਰ ਨੀਰ ਪਰਿਆ ਤੇ ਤੇ ਓਗਨ ਹਮਾਰੇ ਦਿਆ ਕਰੋ ਕਿਛ ਮਿਹਰ ਉਪਾਵ ਹੋ ਡੁੱਬ ਦੇ ਪੱਥਰ ਤਾਰੇ ਤੇਰੇ ਗੁਣ ਬਹੁਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਇੱਕ ਨਾ ਜਾਣਿਆ ਮੈਂ ਮੂਰਖ ਕਿਛ ਦੀਜਾ ਪ੍ਰਾਨਵਤ ਨਾਨਕ ਸੁਣ ਮੇਰੇ ਸਾਹਿਬਾ ਡੁੱਬ ਦਾ ਪੱਥਰ ਲੀਜਾ ਮੂਕ ਉਚਰਾ ਸਾਸਤਰ ਖਟ ਪਿੰਗਰਨ ਚੜ ਜਾਏ ਅੰਧ ਲਖਾ ਬਦਰੋ ਸੁਨ ਜੋ ਕਾਲ ਕਿਰਪਾ ਕਰਾਏ ਕਹਾਂ ਬੁੱਧ ਪ੍ਰਭ ਚੁੱਛ ਹਮਾਰੀ ਬਰ ਨ ਸਕੈ ਮਹਿਮਾ ਜੋ ਤਿਹਾਰੀ ਹਮ ਨ ਸਖਤ ਕਰ ਸਿਫਤ ਤੁਮਾਰੀ ਆਪ ਲਿਹੋ ਤਮ ਕਥਾ ਸੁਧਾਰੀ ਜੇਤਾ ਜਿਓ ਪਿੰਡ ਸਭ ਤੇਰਾ ਤੂੰ ਅੰਤਰ ਜਾਮੀ ਪੁਰਖ ਭਗਵਾਨ ਦਾਸਨ ਦਾਸ ਕਹ ਜਨ ਨਾਨਕ ਜਿਹਾ ਤੂੰ ਕਰਾਹੇ ਤੇਹਾ ਹੋ ਕਰੀ ਵਖਿਆਨ ਦਾਸਨ ਦਾਸ ਕਹ ਜਨ ਨਾਨਕ ਜਿਹਾ ਤੂੰ ਕਰਾਹੇ ਤੇਹਾ ਹੋ ਕਰੀ ਵਖਿਆਨ ਗੁਰ ਸੰਗਤ ਜੀ ਦਸ ਪਰ ਹੈਂਸ ਟੂਗੇਦਰ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਗਿਵ ਮੀ ਯਰ ਬਲੈਸਿੰਗਸ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਇਸ ਪਵਿੱਤਰ ਬਾਣੀ ਸਾਸ ਵਿਰ ਸੰਗਤ ਹਰ ਪ੍ਰਵਸਾ ਜੀਓ ਦੈਨ ਆਮ ਏਬਲ ਟੂ ਸਪੀਕ ਟੂਡੇ ਇਨ ਫਰੰਟ ਆਫ ਦ ਸਾਸ ਸੰਗਤ ਲੈਟਸ ਸੇ ਸਤਿਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਸੋ ਵਨ ਸੈਕਿੰਡ ਇਸ ਕੁਇਕ ਲੋਗਿਨ So Sangat ji my name is uh, Gurkeet Singh and uh, the topic that I was given to speak about was Maharaja Ranjit Singh Now many of us probably have heard of Maharaja Ranjit Singh and when we think about Sikh history what happens is Sikh history starts in uh, 1469 with Tan Sri Guru Nanak Dev ji Maharaj coming upon this earth Aap Narayan Kalatar Jag Mah Parvaryo the very embodiment of the Lord Tan Sri Guru Nanak Dev ji Maharaj comes upon this earth to save anyone everyone kal tarin guru nanak aaya in this dark time of kaljug and maharaj ji throughout their body they explain um what type of raje what type of kings were coming upon this earth maharaj ji says kal kaati raje kasai tarm pankh kar ud rya ja tarm hunda the righteousness is what is the job of a, a king of a ruler of a leader is to preserve but what was happening at the time of kaljug these raje were coming upon this earth they were becoming butchers and the, the righteousness was not being preserved so guru nanak dev ji came upon this earth and they give teachings to gur sikhs and all of us how to live in this world in the type of raj um guru nanak dev ji talks about um when i speak about that a little bit today but before i start i'm going to talk about maharaja ranjit singh um maharaja ranjit singh comes about um 72 years after Sahib Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj leaves this world. So Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj leaves this world in 1708 and in 1780 Maharaja Ranjit Singh comes upon this earth. And when we look at the jeevan of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, I was talking about this yesterday as well. Um, Maharaja Ranjit Singh uh, was no Brahm Gyani. Maharaja Ranjit Singh was not the Jathedar of the Akal Takh Sahib. Um, they, yes, they did make mistakes and they did, did do things that were not according to gurmat but when we look at the raj of maharaja ranjit singh we can say he was an exemplary king at his time the way he brought the qom together and the way he lived by the teachings of satguru sahib ji we can say that this king came upon this earth and he was an exemplary and as gur sikh maharaj tells us in this poitar bani that i wrote up here sanj kari ja gunah kari shor av gun chaliya any time we look at anyone's jeevan um sometimes we jump to the faults in their life the mistakes in their life the mishappenings in their life the wrong doings that the person did par maharaj is turki bani sa sanj karija gunah kari shod av gun chaliya how do we look that to, if we apply that to ourselves 
is when we see someone, do we see their virtues first or their demerits first? Do we see the good things inside that person or do we see the bad things inside that person? And while often when I listen to Qatha, Ma'apur um, Kinder Qatha say, if we look at some individual and we look at the afguns that they have inside of them, the wrongdoings that they do, those afguns will come inside of us. But if we look at the virtues inside that person, the good deeds, the good karms that they have, they possess, then those good karms will come inside of us. So as Gur 6, we're supposed to look at the world in this nigah. Ke saanj kareejja guna kere shod avgun chali gaya. Let go of people's avguns. Te jire gun, right? Guna ko ho ve vasla kad vas kareejja. Maharaj says that we have to look at the virtues inside of a person. So we have to look at what the virtues that Maharaj Ranjit Singh gave us. So my next slide is going to talk about... Um, Sahib Sri Guru Nanak Teji Maharaj, when they came upon their sarts. Um, so if we look at Guru Nanak Teji Maharaj and the timeline and compare it between the Mughals who came upon their sarts, um, first the Mughal Empire was uh, Babur, then it was uh, Hamau, Akbar, uh, Jahangir, then it was uh, Shah Jahan, and Aurangzeb, and then Bahadur Shah. Those were the kings that coordinated with the Guru Sahib's time period. So when Guru Nanak Deji Maharaj um, went to a place called um, um, Am Amnabad, Maharaj went to a city called Amnabad, and Babur was there as well. Um, Babur was on a mission to conquer northeast, northeast India and take over that land and make it his own. So what he started doing, he came from uh, Iran towards the west, and he decided, okay, I'm going to conquer this land. He, at that point, started lo looting and burning down Amunabad and conquering it. Guru Nanak Deji Maharaj told his Sikhs that anywhere you see someone in need, it's your responsibility to go there and help that person. And if you look throughout Sikh history, the first Shaheed that Vidwan say that uh, sacrificed his life, became a martyr, for righteousness was at the time of Sahib Sri Guru Nanak Teji Maharaj's time. His name was Pai Taraji. So when Guru Nanak Teji went to Amnabad and gave this Upadesh, this teaching to Babar, because Guru Nanak Teji Maharaj told Babar, Hey Babar, tu Jabara. They said, The type of king that you are, you are Jabar, you are a villain upon this earth. And Pai Gurdasri Nirvaran, they write, Sing Bukha Mirgavali. Maharaj roared like a lion and stood up against Babar. Now imagine this. Babar was a Empire. He was emperor and he had a vast empire. And one person, such as Guru Nanak, they just standing up against an, em an emperor of his strength um, is very difficult to do. But Tan Sri Guru Nanak Teji Maharaj uh, themselves had Babur, Babur had them arrested, but eventually he realized that Guru Nanak Teji was no one, uh, no one normal. And then he fell at the feet of Sahib Sri Guru Nanak Teji Maharaj. Um, Santagani Gurbachan Singh Ji in their Katha also say, if for those who don't know Santagani Gurbachan Singh Ji is, they're a scholar, um, they're a great Vidwan, a Gurmukh Mahapark, um, who left this world in uh, 1969. Um, and in their uh, Katha, which is recorded, all of it, uh, they explain how Babarashi became a Sikh of Guru Nanak Teji Maharaj. Um, I was going through a grant called the Gyan Ratanavali, written by Shaheed by Mani Singh Ji, um, who got his limbs cut by, uh, joint by joint. And in there, he translates the first vada by Gurdas Ji Ziyamvara. And in there, he talks about the four prime teachings that Sahib Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj gave to Babur. Okay, Babur, if you want to have a Raj, have a kingdom that is of righteousness, these are the four teachings you must follow. He said, Taram da Nyao Karna. Always seek justice for righteousness. Wherever there's, right, wherever there's wrong happening, it's a job of a king to step forward and make it a stop. He is the one supposed to deliver righteousness. That's a king's responsibility. Secondly, Buzurgandi Khidmat Karni. Anywhere you see a Buzurg, anywhere you see an elderly person, it's your job to do their seva. Now we can take a teaching from this as well. Um, from, we learn from their experiences. We do their seva, they teach us um, uh, priceless teachings that can't, we can't put a value on, and we learn from those them. So Maharaji gave a great example here. Then our future will be bright, just like he is trying to tell Babur here. So we know about Guru Nanak Teji Maharaj's first three teachings. 
ਨਾਮ ਜਪਣਾ ਵੰਡ ਕੇ ਸ਼ਕਨਾ ਸੱਚੀ ਕਿਰਤ ਕਰਨੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਜੀ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਦ ਸੇਮ ਐਸਪੈਕਟ ਐਂਡ ਸਟੇਟ ਦ ਸੇਮ ਐਸਪੈਕਟ ਟੂ ਬਾਬਰ ਕਿ ਵਰ ਐਵਰ ਇਸ ਯਰ ਗਰੀਬ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਯਰ ਅਰਨਿੰਗਸ ਵਿਦ ਹਿਮ ਮੇਕ ਸ਼ੋ ਨੋ ਵਨ ਇਨ ਯਰ ਕਿੰਗਡਮ ਇਸ ਲੈਫਟ ਹੰਗਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਖੁਦਾ ਦੀ ਬੰਦਗੀ ਕਰਨੀ ਆਲਵੇਸ ਮੈਡੀਟੇਟ ਔਨ ਦ ਲਾਰਡ ਸੋ ਗੁਰੂ ਨਾਨਕ ਦੇਵ ਜੀ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਗੇਵ ਦਿਸ ਫੋਰ ਟੀਚਿੰਗਸ ਟੂ ਬਾਬਰ ਐਂਡ ਸੈਡ ਖੁਦਾ ਨੂੰ ਚੇਤੇ ਰੱਖਣਾ and one thing i like to make clear here guru maharaj ji didn't tell him to convert to his religion to become a sikh they said to a muslim ana apne dharm ch pakka rehna and said teaching that guru nanak ji all often give they said if you're a muslim man stay firm in your religion if you're a hindu stay firm in your religion and if you're a sikh stay firm in your religion be a complete hindu be a complete sikh and be a complete christian whatever faith you follow so maharaj ji talks about this in the granth uh, gyan ratnavali <clears throat> Next um Maharaj talks about in their Turki Bani Sahib Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj ke being a king and if you don't have the lord's name is useless they say sultan hova mer laskar takht rakha pao hukm hasil kari baitha nan ka sab vao mat dekh pula visra tera chetna aave nao mari singh if you sat on a throne and thousands of came people came and uh, bowed down in front of you whatever you said from your mouth it became command it became hukum it became law even if that everything was happening and people following what you say but if you don't have the name of the lord it's all useless so we have when i'm talking about this stuff we're going to see how maharaja ranjit singh took this and applied it to his jeevan um later on so When I was taught this um I translated this uh, best I could from Punjabi to English it was ke har ek dharm diyan char rajdhaniyan hundiyan every faith has four capital cities like just like a country has its capital cities every faith has four capital cities or capitals um that must be strong for the dharm for their faith for their religion to remain strong um the first are the raja lok the leaders the people the politicians who follow um uh that one faith or one religion um this could be jathedars of the pants this could be kings like maharaja ranjit singh or this could be politicians as well and there's a saying yatha raja tatha parja meaning whatever type of raja there is whatever type of king there is upon this earth this going to have a huge effect on his parja on his following um if the raja is dharmi he's going to make his 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 followers his people living in his uh his citizens the population living inside his co- country will be tarmi as well and if the, the opposite if you have a king who is a villain or racist or sexist just like we have down south with Donald Trump it's going to have the same effect um on his parja like recently i was down there for 2 weeks and i could see a huge difference just traveling across the states of how people communicated and re- acted with you so it's very important right and if you look at us at the current time on um, the state that the common panth is in right where we don't even know who our jathedar of akal takht sahib is right now um is very difficult that we have no leadership so leadership as a role as a raja a king is very important and as one thing maharaj ranjit singh was able to provide uh, next is tirth sthans um every faith every religion has its tirth sthans where people go for pilgrimages um muslim man have the makka um uh, they have the medina we have the harmandar sahib darbar sahib um the um, hindus have uh hardwar rishikesh and other places yes this is distracting <laughs> 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 and then um we look at the christians they have the vatican so shrines are a major place because this is where the community gets together and they can uh, build upon their faith and discuss places for example sri harmandar sahib sri kal takht sahib they're gathering they used to be traditionally gatherings every year twice a year on diwali and vaisakhi the sikh panth got together and uh discussed their differences and came together and solved their issues the next is sadhu lok um sadhus if they're if they're someone's a good saint or if they're um or a follower of god they can help uh faith grow and spread the message out for example people like we here we have camp we have Yeah, Swami Ram Singh Ji or Ganesh Singh Ji who are attaching us to Sahib Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji they've gone through the experiences they've achieved achieved a spiritual vasta a spiritual stage that we might uh inspire to teach uh inspire to reach so we can learn from them just like that um 
Saudu look play a major role, especially an impact on the Parja people who are working every single day, keep, keeping them in line with the faith teachings. A Saudu has a big role in that. And lastly, the Dwans. Uh, where we have a spiritual aspect of Gurmut or any faith, there's also a, a vid educational aspect, right? So learning Gurmut education for us, for other faith, it might, might be learning um, how to read the Quran, how to read the Bible, how to read the Torah. We as uh, Gursiks have to learn how to read Gurbani to make sure that our faith uh, continues to grow and educating ourselves so we can spread the message of Guru Nanak Dejim Maharaj. Guru Maharaj made everyone a Pracharik. Wherever they went, they said, spread the message. And earlier, we were talking about Pai Jagaraj Singh yesterday. Um, it's a great time to include him. He, wherever he went, he asked people, go out there, whatever you know about Sikhi, just share it. Share Sikhi. Share the message of Guru Nanak Dejim Maharaj to every single anyone, and that's the only way our base will grow. So these four things are very important for any Raj. Now we're going to go through a quick timeline. I kind of mentioned this earlier. Um, so Guru Nanak Dejim Maharaj came, comes upon this earth in 1469. Um, that's the same time Babur comes around that time um, to attack uh, Punjab, India, Northeast India. And from 1469 to 1708 is 249 years. In this, in this time of 249 years, the 10 Guru Sahibans come upon this earth, right? Uh, they're all the forms, the embodiments of Akal Parkhwai Guru. One, the light of one Guru goes into the next Guru, right? Jyoti, Jyotarali, Sampuran, Aram. Maharaji takes the physical body and lays the foundation of Sikhi and gives us Sikhi. By, by 1699, they place us on the path of Khande Bhatta the Amrit. And in, 17, uh, in 1708, Guru Maharaj gives Gurta Gaddi to Sahib Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. The period after that is um, the Mughal Empire starts to decline. Bahadur Shah, Guru Gobind Singh Ji actually helped Bahadur Shah achieve Raj. Um, I'll tell you guys a quick Saki that I heard. Um, so uh, we all know who Aurangzeb is, right? Aurangzeb was the son of Shah Jahan. Shah Jahan is the person who built the Taj Mahal. We've heard of the Taj Mahal. Aurangzeb had uh, three different sons, I believe. Um, Dara Shako, uh, uh, no, his brother's name was Dara Shako. He had a son uh, by the name of Bahadur Shah. Um, Dara Shakol came into the Sharna Sahib Sri Guru Harai Sahib Ji Maharaj. He, wanted, he was supposed to get king, become the next king. But when he came into the Sharna Guru Harai Sahib Ji Maharaj, because um, Aurangzeb had poisoned him and he needed this ointment or medication to cure himself again to become healthy, uh, the only place that he could find that medication was at the Darbara Sahib Sri Guru Harai Sahib Ji Maharaj. After, uh, but he leaves this world, he asks for the Sharan of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj in the next world. After that, what happens is Guru Maharaj Ji, uh, at the time of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji Maharaj, sorry, at the time of Guru Har Rai Sahib Ji Maharaj, Aurangzeb becomes the next king. Guru Har Rai Sahib Ji Maharaj had two sons, Guru Har Krishna Sahib Ji and Sahib Sri Guru, uh, sorry, Sahib Sri Guru Har Krishna Sahib Ji and Baba uh, Ram Rai Ji. Baba Ram Rai Ji was very spiritual as well. He went to the Darbar of Aurangzeb because Aurangzeb wanted someone who could show him Karamata. So Guru Maharaj gave Bahattar Karamata, 72 Karamata to Baba Ram Rai Ji. And he went to the court of Aurangzeb and the Guru Maharaj gave him this bachan. Ram Rai, whatever you say from your mouth will come true. But he didn't follow the command of Guru Maharaj. He started using these spiritual powers that he got. Um, Aurangzeb wanted a son. He didn't have a son. And he came to uh, Ram Rai, okay, please grant me a son. I want a son in this world so my kingdom lives on longer. What Ram Rai did, he said, come to me, bring your wife in front of me. I'll read Japji to the pot and I'll, in front of, uh, I'll, I'll place water down. I'll read Japji to the pot. She'll drink that water and she'll get a son who will become the next king. That king was Bahadur Shah. Now, Guru Gobind Singh Ji's sons, the Char Sabzadde, Guru Maharaj's father, Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji, and their mother, Mata Gujari Ji, were all killed by Aurangzeb. But Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj went out of his way to give the kingdom of Dili to Bahadur Shah, who is the righteous owner of that kingdom, who is the right, uh, righteous, uh, he is the one who deserved that kingdom after Aurangzeb. They had a dispute between the two brothers. So Guru Gobind Singh Ji uh, and the emperors at that time were going against, going uh, against each other with the Rangzeb, but they're also helping their son at the same time after uh, he leaves this world. Um, 
What happens after that is Baba Banda Singh Bahadur Ji comes and establishes the first Sikh Raj. Guru Gobind Singh sends Baba Banda, Banda Singh Bahadur from the south up to the north to take revenge for the Shote Sahibzadeh and eventually um, establish the first Sikh Raj. Even though the Sikh Raj only lasted about eight years, this was the first time the Sikhs were able to say that we are the governors and the rulers of our own land. Before this time, there were also always battles between the Mughals. Guru Gobind Singh fought 14 battles with the Mughals. This is the first time the Sikhs had some peace. But that peace didn't last long. Because as soon as Banda Singh Bahadur got captured and made Shaheed, along with 700 other Gur Sikhs, um, the Sikhs uh, were fighting for their life again. And yesterday we heard in the Qatar by Gani Sher Singh Ji, for almost 100 years, Sikhs lived in the jungles and fought for, to establish Sikhi, to maintain Sikhi. And at this time, what was happening is, um, when, this is when people like Mir Manu, Jakriya Khan, and Amr Shah Durrani came upon Punjab and to attack Punjab and kill off all the Sikhs. Um, this is a history that sometimes we don't touch on or not very clear with, but this is a time when Pai Mani Singh Ji got Shaheed. This is a time when Pai Taru Singh Ji got Shaheed. This is a time when we heard the Sakhiya Singh, Bota Singh, Garja Singh got Shaheed. When uh, uh, Shabay Singh, Pai Shabaj Singh got Shaheed. This is a time when uh, Nawal Kapoor Singh came into place. What the Sikhs started doing at this time, they started going into jungles, living in the jungles. They didn't even have time to plant their own food and live off of that. Um, whatever they saw, that's what they ate. Um, whatever they could capture, even whatever they could hunt. They're living off every bark, every leaf of the tree because at that time, the Mughals such as, uh, sorry, the Afghans and the Mughals such as Mir Mannu and Jakriya Khan had placed a price on the six heads. Each one head of a Sikh uh, was worth 80 rupees. That's about $30,000 today. So they said, if you bring us one head of a Sikh, take it off, bring it in front of us, we'll give you $30,000. And imagine that today, if we're walking on the street and there's a price on our head. Today we have Sikhi very easy. These Gur Sikhs were living in the jungles in the rain. In the mor we can't even wake up in the morning. This morning I woke up and I was trying to find a place on the mat to stand because the grass was pretty wet. It was making me cold. But these Gur Sikhs, din raat inane, jungle um, kati, to preserve Sikhi, to maintain Sikhi, and then eventually they would go out and fight uh, against these Mughals. Um, at this time, uh, a special person comes in, Nawab Kapoor Singh. Nawab Kapoor Singh divided the Panth into two categories, the Buddha Dal and the Tarna Dal. The Buddha Dal, again, were the elderly people who were supposed to give guidance to the Khalsa Panth, to give a guidance to the younger people. So if you're under the age of 40, you're a part of Tarna Dal, and it's your job to go out and fight. Um, if you look throughout history, the Maryadda of the Khandapat Sahib, this is when it became more prevalent. Gursikhs living in the jungles are doing a Khandapat Sahib. Before this, there were very few Khandapat Sahib in the Panth. Um, they're one during the time of Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji Maharaj, uh, two at the time of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, and only a couple, uh, a couple more after Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. But when the Panth started doing more Khandapat Sahib, well, what started happening is reading Guru Maharaj's Bani from start to end in 48 hours was how the Sikhs would go out there. If they were going to go fight in a battle to take Guru Maharaj's Asra, they would sit down, do an Khandapat Sahib of Guru Maharaj and then move forward. So, and that's continuing now. We do account of ourselves continually today. So, what Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj has started was something called a Chaturangani Sana. Um, he gave four different roles in the Sikh Panth for every person. Um, there were the Nirmale, Odasis, Seva Panthis, and Nahang Singhs. So, I'll quickly go over this quickly. The Nirmale were the scholars who were the ones who were job was to learn Vidya, to go out and teach Vidya to other people. At the time of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, they sent five Gursikhs to Hardwar, to Kanchi, to learn uh, Vidya, to learn uh, in-depth knowledge about the Vedas, about uh, the Gita, and all sort of ancient texts about Vedant, and then come back and teach inside the Guru Kar. So Guru Maharaj established the Nirmale. Then the Odasis, their job was to take care of the Godwara Sahib. At this time, when Sikhs were living in the jungles, um, who maintained the Darbar, who maintained Darbar Sahib? Who kept the Maryadda of Sri Harmandar Sahib? The Dasis lived there, and they worked, and they took and maintained uh, the Maryadda of Sri Harmandar Sahib. Um, then we had the Seva Panthis. The Seva Panthis started from, uh, from Pai Kaneya Ji. I forgot to mention, the Odasi started from Baba Siri Tandaji, the son of Guru Nanak Teji Maharaj. So they are, they are the oldest uh, Jathe Bandi. Um, I'm not sure if you were there yesterday for... Uh, Gani Sher Singh Ji's uh, comedy act last night, but he talked about Baba Sutra Shah, they were uh, an Odasi. So they're part of the Odasi uh, uh, 
function, you can say. Um, then you have the Nahang Sings. And the Nahang Sings is believed that it started from Baba Fateh Singh Ji. That's another story. But at the time of Nawab Kapoor Singh, majority of the Panth were living in the jungles and fighting for the Panth. Yes, there's some Nirmali out there uh, spreading Vidya. There's some Seva Panthis doing Seva. And there are Udasis who went and took care of Godware. But the majority of the Panth were trained as warriors and as soldiers. So at this time, the, the six were also divided into 12 different missiles. These missiles had different territories, different places where they ruled. And what would happen is, Amal, anytime Amal Shah Durrani, who was an Afghan, would come and attack, he came 11 different times and attacked. He is the one who uh, fought against Baba Deep Singh Baba De when Baba Deep Singh's head came off. He's the one who fought against someone named Baba Gurbakh Singh Ji. I'll mention Baba Gurbakh Singh Ji in a little bit uh, further. Um, he came and attacked a Punjab 11 times. And the, when the six, uh, when he would come attack, all the six would get together, the 12 missiles would come together and fight against him. But um, when he would go back, what would happen is they start fighting against each other. They had personal disputes against each other. So when Maharaja Ranjit Singh was, uh, I'll go to the next slide. When Maharaja Ranjit Singh was born um, in 1780, uh, he was a part of the, a missile called the Shukra Chakya missile. Um, if you look at that missile, it's one of the missiles, so different type of missiles, there was the Pangi missile, um, there was a Shahida, Shahidi missile, which Baba Deep Singh was the head of, and then the Shukra Chakya missile was what Maharaja Ranjit Singh's family descendants were from. So Baba Bodh Singh Ji was a Sikh at the time of Sahib Sir Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, and he actually took Amrit from the hands of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. Um, when the missile started getting formed, the first jathedar of that missile, so what, you guys understand what a missile is? Like a group of people come together, a dal, a jathebandi, who are warriors, they fought together, uh, and they lived together, and they owned a certain amount of territory. So Baba Jarat Singh, when he first started uh, his missile, um, he only had 25 acres of land. And slowly, slowly, he was able to grow that, and grow that more. Um, but Maha, Baba, uh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh's father's name was Mahan Singh. And... Uh, his father actually passed away when he was about 10 or 12 years old. But his father made sure that Maharaja Ranjit Singh was very versed in martial arts and uh, weapon warfare and um, uh, military tactics of how to fight against people, guerrilla warfare, etc. So I'll share this Saki. I always like sharing this one. Um, so the mother of Maharaja Ranjit Singh was someone named Mata Raj Gorji. Um, I believe her paint was in the Sangurur area. If you go uh, in that area, that's where she was from. Um, and when she was going to be born, Maharaja Ranjit Singh's Nani Ji, so his grandma from his mom's side, didn't want a daughter. She wanted a son. Because at that time, uh, just like some people today even discriminate against beeping, right? which is obviously wrong, but she wanted a son. So what, at that time, there was this witchcraft that people used to do. They would take a daughter when she's born, put her inside of a clay pot, put good inside their mouth. You guys know what good is, right? The sweet stuff. Put that inside their mouth, put cotton in their hand, and then say a spell. I got the spell written up here. They would call it, Gor khai puni kati apna ai biranu kalni. Meaning, eat this good, take this cotton in your hand, die from this world, but then, then send your son, uh, brothers into this earth, thinking that if I do this, um, they're, uh, they're not nijita, if I do this, then I'll be able to get a son in this world. Soon as she did that, when soon as Maharaja Ranjit Singh's mother, Maharani Rajkur, was born, they went, she went and buried her. She also went to a saint. The saint's name is Baba Guddar Singh Ji. Now, Baba Guddar Singh Ji was a great Gursik, who was a great Avasta. He knew what she had done. She went to him and said, please bless me with a son. And Baba Gudda Singh Ji read these lines from Gurbani Pankti. Um, Brahman Kali Kanjika Anachari Ka Taan. They said there's four major pops in Guru Maharaj in, that they talk about in Guru Granth Sahib Ji. On Ang 14.13, Maharaj says, killing a Brahmgyani, killing a cow, um, killing or selling your daughter, and um, eating from the hands from an atheist is one of the four major pops that Maharaji talks about in Gurbani. We can go in that, into that later on. It's a very, you can do an entire slideshow on just those four things. But um, they read those pankti and said, you, the, uh, the nanni of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, the mother of Mah uh, Maharani Rajkor, just went out and attempted to kill your daughter. She is still breathing, right? Take her out 
and from her a Raja will be born, a great king will be born. Don't kill your daughter. She got this teaching, Maharaja, uh, Maharani Rajkur's mother. She went, took her daughter out, she was still breathing, and from her, Maharaja Ranjit Singh was born. Um, if you look at, um, I'll go to my next slide quickly. Yeah. If you look at the parents' names of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, um, their mother's name was Rajkur, and their father's name was Maha Singh. So you put those two together, Maharaj, right? The two names of their parents tell, okay, their mother is Maharaja Banjananapot, right? So that's one thing that you can take from the teachings of the name of their parents. Um, so Maharaja Ranjit Singh was born on November 2nd, uh, 1780. Uh, at a young age, he developed smallpox. And when he developed smallpox, he lost sight from one eye. So he was actually blind from one eye. Um, Akali Fula Singh, uh, who was uh, the Jathedar of Akal at that time, who I'll talk about a little later, whenever he called up Maharaja Ran Ranjit Singh, he said, Oh, Kanya, right? Oh, you person blind with one eye. He, even though Maharaja Ranjit Singh was a king, the emperor of that place, but Mah Akali Pula Singh has such a role in the Sikh Raj that they were able to talk to Maharaja Ranjit Singh like that. Um, Maharaja Ranjit Singh became very skilled in horseback riding, and they fought their first ever battle at the age of 10, where they actually went and took off the head of the other general that they're fighting against. So Maharaja Ranjit Singh had this great strength at a young age. And when I was looking at this history, this just blew me away. Um, for almost 100 years, um, where there was uh, the Afghans and other people attacking the Sikhs, and the Sikhs were fighting against each other, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, at the age of 19, was able to bring the entire Panth together at the age of 19. So people who point fingers at Maharaja Ranjit Singh, I always think about this. Okay, we together right now can't bring our Panthers together. We have so many divides amongst each other. But this 19-year-old young man, a teenager, was able to bring the entire Panthers together. At the age of 19, he went and conquered Lahore. Lahore is the capital city of Pakistan today, which is a major city at that time, even now and today. And he was able to go conquer Lahore at the age of 19 and become the Maharaja. In this picture, it's a funny photo, this is the one I could find. But this is um, Baba Sahib Singh Ji Bedi Ji giving Raj Telk to Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Raj Telk is when someone gets placed on a throne and becomes um, uh, emperor or king. Adhistar is tied on them. And that's a ceremony that takes place because this is a person uh, who's a king now. Baba Sahib Singh Bedi Ji was a descendant of Sahib Sri Guru Nanak Deji Maharaj. And Maharaja Ranjit Singh had great respect for Baba Sahib Singh Ji Bedi Ji. Um, anytime um, Baba Sahib Singh Bediji would be seen from far. Maharaja Ranjit Singh would get off their elephant or get off their horse and stand in front of Maha, uh, Baba Sahib Singh Bediji with their hands folded. There are great Brahm Gani Gursik. And often Gursik say that Baba Sahib Singh Bediji is the one who kept Maharaja Ranjit Singh ch in check to test his ego. Okay, eh, today he's a Raja. Is he, is he going behind? Uh, is he going beyond? Uh, is, he going, is he getting too egotistical for his own kingdom? I was reading a book called Katha Parman Sagar, um, and in there they mentioned something which I was, uh, I was amazed by. Um, that as soon as Maharaj Ranjit Singh was walking into his court, sit on his throne, right? Imagine you're in Lahore, you're walking through the fort of Lahore, the entire Sangat is there waiting for the Sikhs to, for the first time in a hundred years, to sit on a throne, to uh, say, This is a Khalsa Raj, this is a Sikh Raj. Maharaj Ranjit Singh himself is walking to the middle, and there's his Takht. He's sitting, he's about to go there, and four voices come to his head. Four voices come to his head. They say, Never let go of your Amrit Vela, always wake up at Amrit Vela. These are four teachings Maharaja Ranjit Singh got from Akal Prakhwai Guru as he walked towards his throne. So, always be, serve the people. Uh, see everyone equally and man marjina karin. Don't only follow your mind, take the input of other people as well. And I was talking to Gani Shir Singh the first day I got here, and I was like, Gani Ji, share something about Maharaja Ranjit Singh with me. Uh, I was going to talk about him. And I've heard this before, and I checked with a couple other Gursikhs. I mentioned uh, Baba Gurbak Singh Ji earlier, right? Baba Gurbak Singh Ji is a Sikh at the time of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. When Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj gave Khande Bhatta the Amrit in 1699, Baba Gurbak Singh Ji took Amrit there. 
Uh, they were one of the five six when Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj gave Gurta Gadi to Sahib Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj in 1708 as Sri Hazur Sahib. Guru Maharaj Ji placed Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj on a throne. Behind them was five Gursikhs. One of those Gursikhs was Baba Gurbaksh Singh Ji. After Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj left this world, the command that they had given to Baba Gurbaksh Singh Ji was to go to Sri Anandpur Sahib, establish Sri Anandpur Sahib again because it had been abandoned by the Khalsa, and then um, to teach Vidya there, to teach Gurmat there. And Baba Gurbak Singh Ji is the same Gorsik who fought against Amir Shah Durrani uh, when he came and attacked Sri Harmandar Sahib. And their Godwara Sahib is actually built behind Sri Akatak Sahib today. Many Gorsiks believe this, and as I confirmed with Gani Sher Singh, they say that Maharaja Ranjit Singh was a reincarnation of Baba Gurbak Singh Ji. That Baba Gurbak Singh Ji is the one, it comes in the Tiyas, that after uh, the Baba Gurbak Singh Ji is given the bachan, that you will become an emperor of the Sikh Raj. So he was no average person, obviously. <clears throat> Often when a kingdom, uh, uh, a royalty gets exchanged, a new kingdom or new royal rulers come in, what they do is um, they change the currency to make sure that the currency is in their place so people know, kete aj sikha sada chalva. And what Maharaja Ranjit Singh did, um, instead of issuing a currency with his own name on it, that's a Ranjit Singh, Raja Ranjit Singh. Maharaja Ranjit Singh took um, the image of Sahib Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj and Sahib Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj and placed that on the Sikh Raj currency. So here's a coin from that time, and you can see there's a picture of Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj and me, Pai Mardan Naji, uh, or Guru Gobind Singh Ji, I can't really tell, make that out right now. But um, on the coin, uh, it would say, Akal Parakchi Sahai, Dego Tego Fateh, Nasat Bed Rang Yafat Arz, Nane Guru Gobind Singh. Right? He placed the name of Akal Parakhwai Guru on there. He placed the name of Guru Nanak Deji Maharaj and Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj on there. Now, when I was thinking about this, I was thinking, why would Maharaja Ranjit Singh do this? And one thought that came to my head, uh, looking at myself, is if I have a coin with Guru Nanak Deji or Guru Gobind Singh's image on it, and it says Akal Parakchi Sahai, with that coin or with whatever that currency, would I go out there and purchase something that I'm not supposed to purchase? It always reminds me as a Sikh in the Raja Maharaja Ranjit Singh, hey, this money is Sachdi Kerta, Taramdi Kerta, with this, only things that to help people and to live a simple life is what I should purchase with it, not go out there and uh, purchase on wrong, wrong items like people, alcohol, tobacco, what else people purchase these days, right? So if you look at the religious dem uh, demography of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, 70% of people living in Maharaja Ranjit Singh's Raj were Muslims, 17% were Sikhs, and 13% were Hindus. One thing I want to point out here is um, Maharaja Ranjit Singh at his time never made Punjabi the Raj Boli. So do you know how we have a French and English as our main languages here in Canada? At the time of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, um, I'm not sure why, I don't have the answer to this, but from what my research shows me, that at that, that time, the Raj Boli, the prime language, remained Farsi, right? The, it remained Farsi. But what Maharaja Ranjit Singh did do is he did translate some grants into uh, Gurmukhi at that time. Maharaja Ranjit Singh had an army of 120,000 people, and his main bodyguards were part of a group called Foje Khas, who uh, uh, Foje Khas, who used to defend him, uh, protect him, and any time there was a major battle, they were the ones in the front line, the commandos fighting against those people. And at this time, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, uh, the Akali Nahang Singhs, who were the, six mil the Sikh military army, they were a sovereign from this. So they were not under the command of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. In some battles, they fought with Maharaja Ranjit Singh, and in some battles, they did not fight with Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Um, Akali Fula Singh, at that time, he was the Jathedar of Akal Tak Sahib and the Jathedar of the Buddha Dal. He's the one who was in charge of uh, the Nahang Singh Foj, the Akal Sana at that time. Yeah. Okay, so again, I'll explain, I should have mentioned this earlier. Maharaj Ranjit Singh used different tactics to uh, bring these missiles together, right? For some he actually married into, some he conquered, and some he said, I'll give you a governorship of this area, this land, but you rule under me. So he used different, many different tactics. I was talking to my brother about this, and he says they do this kind of in, uh, what's that show called? Game of Thrones, right? right? I was talking, telling him about this. Huh? 
Okay, I, I'm not sure. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen it. So, but it's a similar tactics that people used, right? And as a military, uh, as a king, those are tactics people did use. But it was crazy how Maharaja Ranjit Singh at the age of 19 was able to do that. Exactly. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Another person who is a great uh, general in the arm of, uh, army of Maharaja Ranjit Singh was Hari Singh Nalua. Um, he's actually one of my inspirations from a young age. Who's my timekeeper here? No timekeeper. Okay, awesome. I'm gonna be 10 15? Okay, I got time then. Okay. 10 05? I'm fine. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, my clock tells me Pacific time right here. I don't have the Eastern time zone. Okay, so Maharaja Ranjit Singh's general was Hari Singh Nalua. How did Hari Singh Nalua get this name? Nalua was uh, an ancient character in history who is believed to never fought with the sword. Anytime he would get attacked, he always fought with his hands. At one time, Hari Singh Nalua was out in the jungles hunting, and uh, a, a tiger came and pounced on Hari Singh Nalua. He didn't have enough time to take out his sword and defend himself. As a, lion, as a tiger pounced on him, he took his hands, and he ripped open the jaw of that lion with his own paws, his own hands, his claws. And he ripped them open. And from that day on, he was very young at this time, about 16 years old. And from that day on, they started calling him Hari Singh Nalua. That's where he got the name. Then Maharaja Ranjit Singh, in 1807, I believe, is when he recruited Hari Singh Nalua to be in his army. Right away, Hari Singh Nalua was given 7,000 men to lead. And slowly, slowly, he worked himself up. We've heard of the Kohinoor Hira, which is currently in the possession of the British. Um, long history behind that. But how did Maharaja Ranjit Singh have it originally? Um, there was a governor of Kashmir who was kidnapped by the Afghans. The Begum, the wife of uh, his wife, Begum Wafa was her name, um, she wanted uh, uh, to have her husband come back, uh, obviously. So she went to the charna of Maharaja Ranjit Singh and said, bring my husband back, please, for me, and whatever you want, I'll give it to you. I'll give you the most expensive thing I have, the Kohi Nur Hira which has no value on it, as we all know. It's a very precious, precious diamond. Um, Maharaj Ranjit Singh sent Hari Singh Nalua to Kashmir, and they saved the Begum's husband, the governor, and took over the land and made Maharaja, uh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh and Hari Singh Nalua, the governor of the area, and then the Begum presented Maharaja Ranjit Singh with the Kohi Nur Hira. The Kohi Nur Hira used to always hang from Maharaja Ranjit Singh's right sh shoulder. That was his sign of pride. And it is a myth, I was reading online, that if the Kohinur Hira is in a possession of a woman, her, uh, her, um, her Raj Bagh will expand. But if it becomes in the possession of a man, their Raj Bagh will crumple, his kingdom will crumple. I, read, I was reading that online when I was reading about the Kohinur once, um, which could be a myth, could be true, but I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Um, next, uh, the Khyber Path. This is a path that is between... Uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan, which is very, very, uh, it's a, no one can go there pretty much today, right? Even the uh, U.S. Army uh, doesn't go there these days because that's where the threshold, the stronghold of the Mujahideen, the Taliban, and everyone else is that live there, the Patans. The Patans are a very strong and uh, a warrior community. They have a very strong background. But the only people to conquer the Patans in the last 2,300 years was Hari Singh Nalua. Hari Singh Nolua um, went into that land and took over Peshawar. Then he went and took over a place called Jamarod the Kila. Jamarod the Kila, this is a Kila, it still stands there today. He built this, right? It's the path that goes from Kabul to Pakistan. That's the path that goes. Hari Singh Nolua went there and conquered that place. If you guys know, uh, you guys ever see our Muslim brothers, they were salwars, right? Like Bibi and they were salwars. We were pajami, korte pajami, they were korte and salwara. That trend of Korte and Salwara, where did it start from? Hari Singh Nalua. What happened was, Hari Singh Nalua used to go into villages and he pretty much said that I'm coming and these people would be scared of him. They're dressed up like women to disguise themselves and they started wearing Salwara at that time. Today that trend still continues. That's one. It's a trend from that time that still continues. Next, um, if you even go there today, I remember I went to Peshawar in 2001 and a person living in Peshawar told me this, that there's still people in Peshawar in the Afghan area who scare their children by saying, um, 
चुप जहाँ वी हैव वी हैव चाल्ड इन सेक चुप कर जा आर नो माउंट बिली आई या व्हाटेवर राइट दे दे इन दैट एरिया दे से चुप कर जा नलुआ आ जुगा राइट दे स्टिल स्केयर द चिल्ड्रन बाय सेइंग हरी सिंह नलुआ के नाम नाम मैं टॉक बता शेड दिया हरी सिंह नलुआ इट्स प्रीटी अमेजिंग हरी सिंह नलुआ was at a, was in Peshawar, which is on the border of Afghanistan and Pakistan. But at the same time, Maharaja Ranjit Singh's grandson, son, Kanwar Nonahal Singh, his wedding was taking place. And Maharaja Ranjit Singh uh, had invited everyone to come uh, to the, attend this wedding. His wedding was again, uh, with someone named Sham Singh Atari, was one of Maharaja Ranjit Singh's generals. His daughter is who is marrying Maharaja Ranjit Singh's grandson, Kanwar Nonahal Singh. Um, Hari Singh Nalua fell ill at this time. They're unable to attend that wedding. But they also knew in the back of their head that if I go to a wedding, the Afghans living in Kabul are going to come and try to attack from the west as well. So he was at Peshawar at that time. Everyone else, most of his army had gone to the wedding. He only had a few people in his forge with him. And he knew that he couldn't call reinforcements at that time as well. What the, what the, what the Afghans did at that time, they went and tried to attack Jumrod Dakila. Hari Singh Nalua had a step, uh, an adopted daughter. They were also married, but they also had an adopted daughter. When the adopted daughter found out, her name was Bibi Sharankor, when she found out that Jamaroda Kila was about to be attacked, she got on her horse and quickly went to uh, Peshawar and gave a letter to Hari Singh Nalua. Hari Singh Nalua at that time when he received that letter was doing Sri Jabs at the pot. And Katha have heard that when he was doing jobs at the pot, every single day he would bow his head each time, Namastung Akale, Namastung Karpale, that's why he did his bani every single day. It was Amrit Lula time, he was doing jobs at the pot. As soon as he got the letter, he got up, he got on his, horses, his horse. And he had a great relationship with his horse. He would always talk, often talk to his horse. Um, if you ever go to India and Punjab, you see Nahang Singhs are always talking to their horses, right? He would do the same thing. Um, what happened is there's two people that were in his army that backstabbed him. He was shot from behind by two people that were in his army. And, but when he got shot, he spoke to his horse. He said, one time, just take me to Jamarod Dakila. Because the Afghans weren't sure if, uh, if Hari Singh Nulua was still in Peshawar or if he had gone to go attend the wedding. He said, let, me just, let the Afghans just see my face one time. See me riding on this horse towards Jamarod Dakila, they'll back up. Soon as they saw Maha Hari Singh Nulua on his horse, Going and riding towards Jomorod Dekila, they retreated 25 kilometers. That's how much fear he struck into the Afghans at that time. And Hari Singh Nalua entered the Kila and he told all his, his last words were, don't tell anyone about my death. They, took, they said, take my kashara and hang it outside Jomorod Dekila so the force still thinks I'm alive. What's the nashani of a Singh? He has his kashara and tolia drying outside. Hari Singh Nalua got his kashara. That was his nashani. Because Singh had shaheed. Eventually he got shaheed. But the Singhs took that and they went. And as the Afghans retreated, they went and captured Kabul at that time. <clears throat> so where Maharaja Ranjit Singh had, um, uh, he had great six soldiers he also had European uh, generals in his army. So these are two generals that he recruited into his army. Their name is Ventura and Allard. So Napoleon, the great Napoleon, um, he lost his last battle in 1815 of Waterloo. After that battle, um, most of his soldiers didn't have a job. Most of his generals didn't have a job. They were looking for a place to go. Um, these two generals heard about the heroics of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, Ventura and Allard, and they decided to go towards Punjab, to go towards Lahore, and uh, ask for a job for Maharaja Ranjit Singh. And Maharaja Ranjit Singh was very intrigued by the European ways of fighting. And he wanted to recruit European generals, and when he saw this opportunity, he got very excited. Because in the back of his head, he had a mindset that I'm going to go conquer Afghanistan and slowly work my way towards Europe. He wanted to grow his, expand his kingdom massively. So he recruited these two soldiers, uh, these two generals into his army. And when he recruited them, when they came into his Darbar of Lahore, um, he gave them four conditions. He said, you can, you're welcome to join my army, but you have to live by these four conditions. The first condition is you can never shave your beard. Anyone who is in the army of Maharaja Ranjit Singh can never shave his beard. The second was you can't smoke tobacco. No one's allowed smoking tobacco in this army, in this kingdom. Third was, um, you, can never ha you can't have any communication with the Europeans. So if I find a single letter of yours going back and forth from here to Europe, uh, I'll kick you out of my army. And third, fourth was, if the British ever attack, 
uh, me, or if the Europeans ever attack me, you always take my side. And these four, they agreed to these conditions, and he, was, they, he let them in their army. He actually helped, uh, these two actually helped uh, conquer a lot of the land that Maharaja Ranjit Singh conquered. They came in 1822, uh, 1822 and stayed till, stayed, one of them stayed till 1837, and the other one left after Maharaja Ranjit Singh left this world. So this is actually an earlier map. I should have put a better map up, but this is a map of Maharaja Ranjit Singh's kingdom in 1808. So um, how far did Maharaja Ranjit Singh's uh, empire expand? It went from west all the way to Kabul, which here it only shows up to here, but it went all the way up to here, west to Kabul. Then it went north to Kashmir. Then it went south to Sindh and east to Tibet. And I was thinking about this the other day as well, that if you look at these areas, if you look at Kabul, if you look at Kashmir and look at Tibet, these three areas are in dispute right now as well. Uh, Kabul, there's a fight obviously with uh, ISIS and Taliban, Al-Qaeda, all that stuff that's going on there. Kashmir, there's disputes between India and Pakistan. Tibet is between Tibet and China. Those areas are disputed. The last time those areas were not disputed were at the time of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. At this time, Maharaja Ranjit Singh took over these areas and he built Godwaras wherever he could. Um, when the Sikhs were living in the jungles, as I mentioned earlier, there weren't Godwaras to go to. Majority of the Godwara sahibs that were built in Punjab today were built at the time of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Maharaja Ranjit Singh was able to, uh, if he is his Raj didn't come into place, the way we see Punjab today with the Godwara sahibs, the shrines, it wouldn't be there today. We wouldn't be able to have these uh, places we can go, Tarim Tarim sahib. Uh, the seva he did at Hamandar Sahib, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. I'll quickly go through the slide. Um, the education rate at the time of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Um, there's someone named Dr. Logan. His archives are in the Indian archives today. He did uh, a survey on the education rate, the literacy, literacy, literacy rate at the time of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, and he reported that 87% of the people living in Lahore could read and write Farsi fluently. That's a great number. Then he reported 78% of people living throughout Maharaja Ranjit Singh's kingdom were fluent in Farsi. Again, we said the Raj Bulli was Farsi at that time. But how did this, uh, and I want to mention something. There weren't schools at this time. Like we have the education system today, the British bought this education system and we didn't have these schools at that time. People used to go to mandars, masjids, and gudwaras to learn. And madrasse. But they didn't have schools at this time. How did Maharaja Ranjit Singh increase his education rate so high? I'll mention one thing here. Maharaja Ranjit Singh himself was uneducated. He used to sign by uh, stamping his thumb anywhere he signed. You'll never find a signature of him. What he did, he got his education minister to develop a kada, a small book, which is called Kade Nur. And that Kade Nur was a three-month course. Um, he told the education minister to develop this kada and write uh, 5,000 copies of, of this by hand and spread it throughout his kingdom. Then what he did was he got that kada nur and he told anyone who takes this kada nur, do the three-month course, learn it, understand it, and then write five more kadas out by hand and share it with five other people. And he kept a registra registration of this. Every single person was able to go through this kada and he got his education rate um, high like that. So, uh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh was a great don. He used to give a lot of don. Any gift he got that was very precious, he's always donated to a city Harmandar Sahib. He had a great love for Harmandar Sahib. He was often called the Philosopher's Stone. Um, there's a funny story that one time Maharaja Ranjit Singh was going with his entourage, walking through. On his, he was on his horse, and an old poor lady came up to Maharaja Ranjit Singh with a stove in her hand. And she went and started rubbing against Maharaja Ranjit Singh's leg. If you guys don't know a, st a philosopher's stone, if you touch it to anything, it turns into gold. If you touch it with metal, it turns into gold. Um, Mahara she started rubbing against Maharaja Ranjit Singh's leg, and the bodyguards were pushing her away, and Maharaja Ranjit Singh stopped them and said, What are you doing, Mataji? Dasuki karreya. She said, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, I heard you're a paras, you're a philosopher's stone. Anything you touch turns into gold. And he got very excited. He's like, Let me see your pan, how much it weighs, the stove that you have, how much does it weigh? She, he took it and he put it on a scale. And the equal amount that the stove weighed, that's much gold he gave her. There's another story that Swamiji told me yesterday. That one time Maharaja Ranjit Singh was going for his walk with his couple of his soldiers. And these kids were throwing rocks at a tree. It was a mango tree. And one of the rocks missed the tree and came and hit Maharaja Ranjit Singh in the head. 
And then he called, he, took, he told his spies, his soldiers, to go get those children, ask them what they're doing. And when he, they asked him, they said, we throw rocks at this tree, and in return, it gives us mangoes. And that really hurt him. He's like, if a tree, you, by throwing rocks at it, it gives you mangoes, I'm a king of Punjab. You hit me with a rock, I should give you something as well. He signed off an entire pin to the village, uh, an entire village to those kids' parents at that time. That's how much of a dhani he was. Right? It's, it is, these stories are not of an average person. So, Sri Harmandar Sahib, you probably know that Maharaja Ranjit Singh is the one who put gold on Sri Harmandar Sahib. It wasn't always covered in gold, right? But how did this take place? This is where you can see how Maharaja Ranjit Singh wasn't perfect. Um, if you go to uh, Pakistan area on the border of Pakistan and Punjab, there's something called Kanjari Dapul. Maharaja Ranjit Singh was on his elephant and he was riding on his elephant through and there's these prostitutes dancing by this bridge. Um, he stopped his entire entourage and started watching them. And he got very excited. He started giving them the money. He actually took one of them, gave him a ride on his elephant. At that time, Hari Singh Nolua was a, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Akali Fula Singh was the Kaal Taksab Jathidar. And when he heard of this, he gave a verdict, he gave a hukam to all the population, to all the Sikhs, that any Sikh must not speak with Maharaja Ranjit Singh. If you see Maharaja Ranjit Singh, you ignore him. Maharaja Ranjit Singh used to have a box outside his darbar, and people used to put letters inside of there, and he would come and discuss any problems that they had. They would put, they would put it inside into the box, and then they would have discussions with them, and he would help them out. The next day when he saw that no one was talking to him, his box was empty. He was confused. He, sent one of his, he asked one of his governors and uh, ministers, what's going on here? Why is no one communicating with me? Normally when I walk through, every day I walk through, people are folding their hands and stop and bow down to me. Today no one's even looking at me. He said, Akal Taq Sahib Jathidar, Akali Fula Singh has given this hukun nama, ke jira uh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, he didn't say anything. No one speak to him. He did a huge pop, he did a budget karat, and the Sikhs are not speaking with him. <coughs> so as Maharaja Ranjit Singh heard this, he got very hurt. He went right away to Sri Harmandar Sahib, right away to Sri Akal Taq Sahib, and he folded his hands in, fr in front of Akali Fula Singh and said, ke Akali Fula Singh Ji Jathidar Ji, please forgive me. And Akali Fula Singh was in a lot of biras, in a lot of anger, uh, and they said, strip him naked. They told Maharaja Ranjit Singh, take all his clothes off, and there used to be a tree in front of Sri Harmandar Sahib, it was called Imli the Bish. Um, if you look at old photos, the original Imli the Bish is still there, but um, in 84 it got destroyed and they replanted it now. So there's still a tree in that exact same spot, but not the same one. They took Maharaja Ranjit Singh, they handcuffed him and tied him to the tree, and said, you're going to be whipped. We're going to whip all the lust out of you. And when he heard that, uh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh folded his hands and said, whip me as much as you want, Akali Fula Singh, but save me from the whips of the Jamduts in the afterlife. Right? I've committed a pop, please save me uh, from them. Whip me in this world, punish me as much as you want here, um, and save me from the next world's punishment. And right away, Akali Fula Singh, when he saw this, he said, Eja Raja ni se milna. They said, uh, unhandcuff him and put him to the side. They threw him to the side and he said, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, tenu seva e laganiya. The punishment you're going to get, the tanakha you're going to get, is Sri Guru Ram Das Maharaj Zarbar. You have to cover it all in gold. So if you go to Sri Harmandar Sahib today and you look at the front door, right about there, this sign is there. And it's written at the time of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, has all of Mool Mantra from Ekko Ankar to Nani Kosi Pisach, and it states in there that this seva of putting gold on Sri Harmandar Sahib, Guru Ram Das Ji Maharaj Ji ne apne Sikh Maharaja Ranjit Singh to karai. So you can go there today and look at that. How much, uh, what's, update one more time, sir? Huh? <laughs> okay. I might take 10. <laughs> okay, so Maharaja Ranjit Singh, how much respect did he have for Darbar Sahib? Anytime he would take, go to a new place, Peshawar, Lahore, anywhere he was in his kingdom, the first question he would ask before sitting down on his throne, is my back facing towards Guru Ram Das Ji Maharaj's house? Is my back facing towards Harmandar Sahib? If his back was facing towards Harmandar Sahib, he would make them change where he was sitting, seated. So he always wanted to face towards Harmandar Sahib. Um, Again, as I mentioned earlier, he donated great wealth, great gold to Sri Harmandar Sahib, the Tosha Khanan that's still there today, a great Chandani he donated, a Chandwa Sahib to Harmandar Sahib as well. I was reading um, 
uh, this, uh, and I thought I'd share with you guys well. It's some book called Sikh and Afghans uh, by Shanmat Ali Khan, and he states in there um, that Maharaja Ranjit Singh every single day for one and a half hours he would listen to the to the Granth Sahib, to Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. So in his daily nitanim, he always listens to such parts of the Sahib through Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. Again, going back to that uh, first voice I heard, Ke Amrit Vilani Kite Shadana. Um, in another book called Kaal Se De Vasi, on page 284, uh, I'll read this out in Punjabi to you guys. Bikrami uh, Samat Staran So in 1751, Bikrami, um, if you guys are not familiar with the Bikrami calendar, today currently we use the Gregorian calendar, which is 57 years ahead of the traditional calendar that six used. So if you look at this date and translate it back, that's about 1694. So in 1694, a sroop that was written out by hand uh, at the time of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, um, Maharaj Ranji Singh had that sroop in his darbar at all times. Bikrami Samat Staran So Kwanja De Hathalak Sroop Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji To Hukunama Laake Te Kursume Baath Ke Haar Roj Paat Sonna Is Aapne Haar Roj De Nitnim Uparant Maharaj Ranji Singh Ji Ne Kalgi Tar Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji Di Kalgi Aapne Akha Na Shwa Ke Fair Raj Darbar Vich Karjan Te Jande San So Maharaj Ranji Singh Hara Kalgi this is a very special Kalgi. When I was looking into this Kalgi, um, it actually got brought, brought, brought back to Siri Akal Taksaib in 2009. If you trace this Kalgi back, this is the same Kalgi that Guru Gobind Singh Ji gave to Bhai Sangat Singh when they're in Chamkor Saib. When Guru Maharaj dressed up Bhai Sangat Singh uh, as himself, and the Mughals were mistaken for uh, Bhai Sangat Singh as Guru Gobind Singh Ji because of the Kalgi. This is that same Kalgi. This Kalgi was taken to Arangzev to prove to him that yes, we got Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. Obviously, they realized after they didn't. That Kalgi went in the possession of um, uh, Arangzev. Then it went into the Mughal Empire. Slowly, slowly, it went into the hands of some Afghans. Maharaja Ranjit Singh paid great money to get this Kalgi and in his darbar. Every single day, he would put this Kalgi in front of Guru, uh, Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. He would read or listen to the part of Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj, then he would take that Kalgi and slide it against his eyes, and then he would go into the darbar, always thinking about Guru Maharaj first in the morning. Just two more slides here. Um, we've heard of such Khan Siddhi Hazur Sahib, right? The fifth duct of the Khalsa Pant. When Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj left this world, they gave um, one hukam. They said, no one, no Sikh should build my Yadgar. No one should build my monument. At that time, um, they said, if anyone who builds my monument in my honor, onna da parwar ni revega. Now, Maharaja Ranjit Singh was the one who built Sri Nankana Sahib. They did great save of Sri Harmandar Sahib, of Taran Taran Sahib, many other Gurdwara Sahibs. And when the British, because the British were in the south, the British had actually signed a treaty with Maharaja Ranjit Singh. The, do you know how Punjab has five rivers? Satlo, Jaravi, Chinab, Jhelum, Te, uh, Jhelum, Te, Bias. Satlo, Jaravi, Bias, Jhelum, Te, Chinab. Five rivers. Punjab, right? Five, land of five rivers. Satlo was one of the rivers, which was further to the east. They said, the British was said that we will stay to the east of Satlo and you stay to the west of Satlo and we won't fight amongst each other. It was a treaty that they signed three different times. So they had some relationship with Maharaja Ranjit Singh. But Maharaja Ranjit Singh obviously, obviously didn't trust them as well. The British came to Maharaja Ranjit Singh and said, and Maharaja Ranjit Singh, what type of king are you? You haven't built a Godura Sahib for your guru who lives in the south. At that time, the British ruled this area. And at that time, there was no Godura Sahib or anything for at Hazur Sahib. There used to be a small jot there, and sometimes Maharaja Prakash would take place at the Angita Sahib of Sachkhan Sahib. Maharaja Ranjit Singh knew about the hukum that Guru Maharaj gave. But when he heard about this, it really hurt him. He said, this is the opportunity that I have as a Sikh, as a Raja at this time, to build a Godwara Sahib for my Guru. He knew about the hukum, but he said, I'd rather let my family be destroyed, my kingdom be finished, my rule, any rule I have over this land be done, but I want the Yadgar of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj to be established for thousands of years to come. So Sant Gani Gurbachan Singh Ji in a uh, grant called Gormak Prakash, they write this. They say, Siri Abchal Guru Thaan Dakhan Me Langar Chalayao Jag, gore, jag Kare Gur Vahake. That Maharaja Ranjit Singh went to the south at Siri Abchal Nagar, which is Hazur Sahib, and started a langar for the first time. 
ਗੁਰੂ ਦੁਆਰੇ ਹਿਤ ਸਰਬੰਸ ਨੇਜ ਰਾਜ ਲਾਇਓ ਫਰ ਦ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰਾ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਫਰ ਦ ਦਰਬਾਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਆਫ ਸਚਖੰਡ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਹੀ ਸੈਕਰਫਾਈਸ ਹਿਸ ਓਨ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਐਂਡ ਹਿਸ ਰਾਜ ਪਾਗ ਜੜ ਕੀ ਪਰਵਾਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਰਾਖੀ ਪਾਤ ਸਾਹ ਕੀ ਹੀ ਡਿਡਨਟ ਕੇਅਰ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਹਿਸ ਰੂਟਸ ਪੀਪਲ ਟੁਡੇ ਵਾਟ ਟੂ ਸੇ ਇਜ਼ ਵੀ ਵਾਂਟ ਆਰ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਟੂ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਲੌਂਗ ਲਾਈਫ ਸੌਰੀ ਲਾਸਟ ਫੋਰਐਵਰ ਆਰ ਆਰ ਲਿਨੀਅਜ ਆਰ ਜਨਰੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਟੂ ਗਰੋ ਐਂਡ ਗਰੋ ਐਂਡ ਗਰੋ ਸੋ ਮਾਈ ਨੇਮ ਕੈਨ ਬੀ ਪ੍ਰਿਜ਼ਰਵਡ ਮਹਾਰਾਜਾ ਰਣਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਡਿਡਨਟ ਕੇਅਰ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦਾ ਤਾਨੋ ਪਕਾਰੀ ਤਨ ਉਪਕਾਰੀ ਸਿੱਖ ਰਾਜਾ ਰਣਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਤਨ ਮਨ ਤਨ ਗੁਰੂ ਸੇਵਾ ਮੇ ਲਗਾਏ ਕੇ ਦੈ ਹੀ ਸੈਕਰਫਾਈਸ ਹਿਸ ਵੈਲਥ ਹਿਸ ਮਾਈਂਡ ਐਂਡ ਹਿਸ ਬਾਡੀ ਫॉर ਦ ਗੁਰੂ ਐਵਰੀਥਿੰਗ ਹੀ ਹੈ ਦਾ ਸੋ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਅ ਸਿੱਖ ਮਹਾਰਾਜਾ ਰਣਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਵਾਸ ਸੋ ਮਹਾਰਾਜਾ ਰਣਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਡੈਥ ਕਮਸ 40 ਇਅਰਸ ਟੂ ਡੇਟ ਦ ਮਹਾਰਾਜਾ ਰਣਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਵਾਕਸ ਐਂਡ ਐਂਡ ਸਿਟਸ ਔਨ ਅ ਥਰੋਨ ਆਫ ਲਾਹੌਰ ਮਹਾਰਾਜਾ ਰਣਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਡੈਥ ਕਮਸ ਦੇ ਪਾਸ ਅਵੇ ਫਰਮ ਦਿਸ ਵਰਲਡ the final teaching that they give um is depicted in this picture picture to their sons um maharaj ranjit singh tells one of his sons to bring me a pile of sticks then he says hand me one stick over if i and then he broke that one stick he said if you start dividing yourselves up like this like that like the one stick did you'll snap in half but if you stay together no one will be able to break you what happened is after maharaja ranjit singh leaves this world it was of natural causes some people say he was poisoned uh slowly but most of the ones agree that it was of natural causes causes he was 69 years old um what happened after this is these dog these people who were high rank officials in maharaja ranjit singh's raj called the dogre tyan singh dogra gulab singh dogra they started working with the british they wanted to get the raj bag they wanted to become the next uh rulers of punjab they had already had their governor they already had their territories divided while maharaja ranjit singh was alive and they killed maharaja ranjit singh's eldest son baba kharak singh and baba sher singh their two sons they were killed and slowly um the british the treaty that they signed of satluj they ignored it and they attacked and there's two great wars sikh anglo wars where sham singh atari ge shaheed great sikh generals ge shaheed they pretty much kidnap um maharaja dilip singh and maharaj dilip singh is converted to christianity he is stripped away from his land he's never allowed to come back to punjab never allowed to come back to lahore you guys probably seen the video uh the movie that came out the black prince but um that's how his raj got lost at that time so after maharaja ranjit singh's 40 years of raj there's no uh there were no peace in this area and the british came and took over i was supposed to talk about how the british in influenced sikhi or uh colonialism went came in and uh change the, the traditional ways of gurmat and gursikhi um but i don't think we have enough time i'll just mention one thing um if we look at sri harmandir sahib today and how our gurdwara system works in punjab we have election system in sikhi there's no democracy we believe in selecting our officials we don't believe in electing our officials originally what would happen is gursikhs would get together to see one person this person is fit they elect him they select him as a as a joint group together and said so this person who should uh, run our, our our leadership for us what the british did to the uh, influence of the british all our good dars sahibs today are run through an election system in punjab there's an election of the sgpc that takes place every 5 years i believe um which is very corrupt these days what the british did they worked on a concept of divide and rule they divided us they they put all these different uh uh doubts in our minds with gurbani right such as uh dasamari's bani rag mala bhagat bani pai gurdas is vara also has divides with anas to create different factions fractions and the same thing that maharaja ranjit singh uh, talked about right before he left this world that if you stick together no one will be able to destroy you but if you guys divide amongst yourselves you will break like the stick that's what's happening we are dividing ourselves as a community and the, the teaching that maharaja ranjit singh gave but we're not falling that sticking together right so when maharaja ranjit singh left this world all up in job was sad there's a beautiful song that I won't go uh poem that I won't go through right now about how the entire punjab was weeping even the birds and the plants were weeping um from the death of maharaja ranjit singh there's a small story that when maharaja ranjit singh's jikha their pyre their uh, the cremation was burning uh, two doves actually came and fell into the fire as well saying that we want to leave this world with maharaja ranjit singh we can't be in a kingdom that's not ruled by a great king like maharaja ranjit singh 
So speaking of made many mistakes, please forgive me. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Um, and if you would like the slideshow, I'll probably give it to the Seva Dar and they can uh, uh, hand it over to you guys. Um, Devo Sajjana Sisariya Jehovah Sahib Sameel Please bless me that I'm able to do Nishkam Seva and become the dust of all the Sahas Sangat Vahe Gurji Ka Khalsa Vahe Gurji Ki Fateh